Okay guys, here is a whole topic summary for the last bit of your AQA physics space. This is my absolute favourite topic, um, but it's really, really hard to teach because most of this cool stuff isn't on the specification. So as much as I would love to spend ages and ages gossiping with you about what is going on in space, unfortunately we can't. So this is a much shorter video than I would like it to be because it just has stuff that you need to know in it. Um, to go with this, there is a revision guide which you can get free from my website or from Amazon. Our solar system is a beautiful, um, varied and fascinating thing. Starting with the Sun all the way over here, we move through Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars and our moons. The asteroid belts with some dwarf planets in, I'll come back to these in a second. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and poor old Pluto down here, which isn't a planet anymore. It's just a dwarf planet. To help you remember the order, we have my very easy method just speeds up naming and then it used to be planets at the end but Pluto isn't a planet anymore so it's now my very easy method just speeds up naming if you guys have any other um, ways that you remember the order of the planets or anything else pop that in the comments below because I'm sure loads of other people would love to see what you come up with so poor old Pluto here it used to be a planet, it is now a dwarf planet. Um, I'll do a separate video on why Pluto is now a dwarf planet. But our dwarf planets are here, 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 and here. I'm not going to try and pronounce some of those names because I'm very, very sure I will get it wrong. Um, we have an asteroid belt in between Mars and Jupiter. Um, and then another belt of large objects right on the edge. The galaxy that we live in is the Milky Way. And here you can see the Milky Way stretching across the sky. We are on the edge of the Milky Way, on one of the arms right on the outside. In the middle is a black hole. Here we have the life cycle of a star. It is going to start off as a cloud of dust and gas. And these are going to come together under the force of gravity. Because everything has gravity, no matter how small it is, um, no matter how large it is, it all has gravity. And then we're going to be a main sequence star. Our sun is actually a rather small star in comparison to most of the other stars in the galaxy, in the universe. Um, lots and lots of them are much, much bigger. Now, depending on the size of the star, they're going to undergo two different things. Our sun, being a rather small star, once um, the nuclear fusion that goes on in the centre has run out of fuel, it is going to become a red giant, and then it is going to cool down um, into a white dwarf or a black dwarf. If it is a large star, much, much more massive than our sun, it is going to become a red supergiant, it's going to undergo supernova, and then the dense, dense core of that is either going to turn into a black hole or a neutron star. Now, our sun is a second generation star. Because after this um, red supergiant undergoes supernova, what we are left with is a cloud of dust and gas. And that cloud of dust and gas can get together again to form a new star. And we know this is because the sun has heavy elements. Things like iron are present in the centre of the star. Which means, since we were created from this cloud of dust and gas, which also formed the earth, that you literally used to be a star. You are a star. You are made of stardust. You are a star. You can tell people that. In the centre of a star, we have loads of hydrogen and helium. And they're going to be fusing together. This is nuclear fusion. 
not fusion that takes place in reactors that we have on Earth, but nuclear fusion. And we can see that massive amounts of energy is released. And this is energy as light and as heat energy. And if we were close enough, we'd be able to get the heat of sound energy as well. When all of the helium um, and hydrogen nuclei in the middle run out, that is when our star's um, life comes to an end. Now, our star, our sun, is a main sequence star, so it's going to have heavy elements as well. They are going to be undergoing the same process but the majority of um, elements inside a star inside the majority of stars in the universe are going to be hydrogen and helium an artificial satellite is going to be something that we've put up into space to orbit earth whereas a natural satellite is going to be something like the moon which naturally orbits the earth a satellite is just anything that orbits the earth they maintain their orbit around the Earth due to gravity. There is a key distinction between the terms speed and velocity. Speed is how fast you are going. Velocity is how fast you are going in a certain direction. So speed is going to be a scalar quantity and velocity is going to be a vector quantity. If something is going in a circle, for example, orbiting the planets, it can be going at a constant speed, but it is not going in the same direction. If it is going in the same direction, it would always be going like that, in straight lines. So it is constantly changing direction, which is why you can have a change in velocity while going at the same speed. When we are looking at stars, we can see light coming from them, and the wavelength of light can tell us things about them. If the wavelength has increased, the frequency has decreased, it means the wave is being stretched out, it's moving away from us. When the wavelength is increased, the light that's coming from these stars is going to look red. We can say this is red shifted. Sometimes the light coming from these stars might look a bit blue. When stars look a bit blue, it's because the wave is being squashed. It has a decreased wavelength and increased frequency. That means that the star is coming towards us. The majority of stars in the galaxy are moving away from us. You're going to get uh, maybe a dual system where one is moving away from us, one is moving towards us. So one might show red shift and one might show blue shift. But the majority are moving away from us. And because they are moving away from us, we can make the reverse assumption that at one point they were closer to us, really close to us. Or that at one point they were in the same place as us. And this is how red shift gives evidence for the Big Bang.